I've decided that it is time to get my doors rust free. Well, I decided and some of you voted, but boy, I did not expect my doors to be this rusty. And it only got worse the deeper I went. Unfortunately, there are not any replacement parts for these doors except for the outer skin, which is thankfully the least of my worries. But let's get this door taken apart and have a good look at what we're working with. I do suspect there to be some Bondo hiding under this spot, but hopefully it's nothing too huge. As for the inner door panels, I plan on keeping them in order to use them as a template so that I could remake some new door panels. And is anybody aware what this vent is for? Uh, the door doesn't have any plumbing for it, so I've never understood what it was used for. Also, this plastic moisture barrier that I'm throwing away, I've seen a lot of people skip it when they rebuild their doors. It's not a skippable item. You must put a moisture barrier back in when you rebuild the door. When it came to the door disassembly, I just went for it without educating myself on how it's done. I figured that if I remove all the bolts and screws that I can see, that it will come apart nicely. I was wrong. The door opening mechanism was proven to be a lot more difficult than I had expected. I tried removing the outer door handle because it made sense to remove that before I got the inside pulled out, but I still couldn't figure it out. Thankfully, I have a Bentley manual on deck, thanks Russ with the bus for forgetting it at my house, and I got to skimming through some information. I then remembered I don't know how to read and there weren't enough pictures. So I got back to unbolting things and pulling them apart. Removing the door lock mechanism from inside of the door felt like one of those brain teaser puzzle games, except difficulty level impossible. But once I finally got that out, we could move on to removing the glass. Or so I thought. There were actually so many other seals and things that I had to remove before I could get the glass out that I thought I was losing my mind. And getting that smoker's glass or the one that kind of pivots out was near impossible. I knew that there was a screw up top somewhere from what I had figured out from the Bentley manual, but I couldn't exactly see where it was. But eventually, after ripping out every seal that I could possibly see and wiggling that little smoker's window to high heavens, I finally got it out which meant I could get the glass out, and I was one step closer to getting this door on the operating table and ready for operation. Since my bus is already in a million pieces, I decided to keep the door parts separate from everything else, so I got a coffee tin, labeled it, and stored all my door parts inside of it. Now it was time for a little bit of cleaning, a little bit of vacuuming, there is tons of rust in there. And then we were ready to get it on the chopping block. As per suggestion by one of my viewers, I will be scuffing up the surface prior to using paint stripper. And in this case, we will be using the Aircraft Stripper Ultra because it's the only one that actually works. We'll be laying it on nice and thick, letting it sit uh, for maybe a couple hours. I ended up letting it sit overnight. And then, well, let's get to some satisfying scrapage. I'm wearing a mask. Now you can see in the areas where there was Bondo, it did actually get down and remove some of the Bondo from the metal. You can see the area that repaired here rusted under the bondo. That's why we use epoxy primer. A whole chunk of original VW paint. Who wants it? The fifth person to like this video gets this. 
for free. I don't think anybody wants that. And unfortunately, there was a little bit of rust under some of the paint and under some of the Bondo. Of course, where this uh, side marker reflector was, there is more rust than I hoped for under it. And you'll see later that it's actually pitted to sh But we're going to get everything uh, down to bare metal. We're going to clean it up, scrape away as much rust as possible, and then see what we're working with. As per usual, no matter what paint stripper you used, you're still going to have to bust out the carbide disc. So I did my best to grind off all the paint possible, and what we were left with was a little bit of uh, rust that was under the paint itself. My favorite, Ospo, we will be using it to remove as much rust as possible. We'll get this cleaned up, give it a few sprays, give it a few grind downs, and then we can finally flip it over and get to the actual spicy part. The part that uh, I wasn't looking forward very much. Looking forward very much. Looking forward to very much. <laughs> I've got the classic bottom of the door Swiss cheese situation going on. And due to the fact that there are so many complex curves here, or maybe not complex in the regular use, but you know, when you're trying to fabricate something, it's got all these little curves and bends and lips. If you're not really good at fabrication, it's hard to make it all in one piece. So I already know that I'm going to be making this thing in multiple parts. And the deeper I got into it, the more Swiss cheese I found. All the way down to the inner structure, actually. So one of the first things that we will be repairing is this inner structure, which is slightly thicker steel than the skin of it. So I use slightly thicker steel to repair it. And once it was welded on, I treated the rust, gave it some Ospo, gave it a scrub. I've used everything from my little scrubby bristle brush to, um, well, what's this thing called? The, the, the Dremel tool. I dremeled it, I sprayed it some more, and then it was ready for some POR 15. Now I'm using this on the inside to protect it, to coat it, to take care of it. Because, well, someday this is going to happen again. Unless if I take care of the bus really well. We can now move on to some of the first steps of reconstructive surgery. As I said, we are going to be doing this in multiple parts, as it's just going to make it a bit easier to fabricate everything, and I'm using just some of my leftover funky green panel metal. It's, it's, just, it's just metal. It's just the right thickness. I did uh, the majority of these repairs that you're going to see here uh, simultaneously with streaming yesterday. It was tons of fun. Um, I stream almost every Saturday, so you guys should totally check that out. If you enjoy watching these videos, we can interact, have a good time, you know, have a cold one. But as you can see, I'm doing this little by little. I'm bending, I'm uh, folding, and it's just, it's just a big process. It's a long process of getting this done. Thankfully, this is not really going to be visible. It's going to be behind the door uh, panel, the door card. And the main thing that I'm, I'm focused on getting correct is basically the bottom of the door so that uh, the outer skin will line up well and look good. And then the inner part where the seal runs along because I want it to seal correctly. Other than that, uh, I just want the general curvature to look correct and for things to fit. But unfortunately, we are all out of time. So if you'd like to see this door finished, make sure to subscribe for part two. I will see you guys on Wednesday, and if you are a father, happy Father's Day, and if you have a father, happy Father's Day.